Okay, we're, we're back doing this again. Westworld, Season 3, Episode 6. Back again, Nick, um, for another, another uh, review or discussion, really, of uh, Westworld. You want to uh, say anything about it? Well, yeah, so I've been kind of negative, I guess, in terms of my opinions of this show. Uh, across this season I want to end after this 8th episode with a bonus episode of what I would consider to be my favourite episode of Westworld and I want to review that one or discuss that one just to contrast it with this season unfortunately I'm probably going to be pretty hard on this episode as well and I've got my little uh, writing uh, notes here, my written notes, should I say, and uh, we'll go through those. Yes, uh, would be good to go through those and uh, discover all the amazing things that happened in this episode. Uh, and we'll start off, why don't, you, uh, <laughs> why don't you tell us about the first one? Alright, so, according to my notes, Maeve, again, is seen in the opening credits. She's with c -Rock and she's chasing down her child again which is something that has carried over for so long now and it makes no sense whatsoever it's not a motivating factor in the series but we just go on and on about it i have no idea why that is supposed to be some big thing for her um but the the worst part about this was that Maeve was in the World War II world again. And of course, what does she do? The most ridiculous thing possible. And the worst thing you could do for a character and for the series. And I don't know who this is for. I mean, who does this serve? When she goes out there, we see the German army again. She uses her special superpowers to get them to put all their weapons down. And then we go into the Matrix, don't we? It's a bit reminiscent of the Matrix. Uh, we've got the superhero. And she systematically beats up. Not only beats up, but uh, kills every single German there. There's probably, I guess, maybe 30? 30, 30 to 40? And she kills them all. Uh, I'm assuming this is for fanboy excitement i don't know it certainly doesn't add any effect it actually subtracts from the story it's so bad that it takes you right out of the immersion of the story and just sends you spiraling into a sighing uh, confoundment of absolute disbelief so the next scene we've got a almost like an, an alcoholic anonymous meeting where William is now in the uh, what we consider perhaps is the mental institution and he's telling a very um, sad story about life and what he perceives life to be and of course we have people saying what's wrong with you well what's wrong with him I think he's in a mental institution so there's obviously something wrong with everybody there and and somebody cries because he says the world's a bad place and that's so sad, isn't it? Yeah, and uh, it's also quite similar to the discussion that they have at the baseline tests in the other seasons to uh, make sure that uh, you're um, still, um, or you're progressing uh, towards understanding who you are. Uh, but anyway, um, that was great. Uh, he had a therapist at one point who was talking to him and then I guess she got that uh, memo, the awakening memo on his cell phone and um, I, I don't understand how it works now because I thought you only got your own memo and then somehow her partner got the memo that she was a, a cheating on him or something and he took the children away 
and she spiraled out of depression, into depression, sorry, um, because she had lost her medical license immediately, of course. Uh, I don't know how this works now, really. It's just taken a leap of logic well beyond the last episode. But then, um, of course, she goes into a depression and uh, kills herself, hangs herself. But we'll find out later on um, about this. And, and then I guess you can backtrack and say, well, because it was in a certain thing, it wasn't really uh, what happened. But, uh, yeah, I don't know what to say. It's just a bit of a, a jam. Peanut butter and jam mess, really, at this point. After that scene, what did we have? What did I write down here? Doing some medical research on gives him a plate and mouth therapist kills herself so they in, they install the electronic plate in the top of William's mouth similar to what Caleb has um, I'm not entirely sure what the purpose of this is but I guess it's so that they can induce some type of uh, thoughts into his mind without him well, I guess he has no control of that. So virtually it's like drugging someone, but electronically through electrical impulses into the brain, I imagine. Uh, so he goes into this world for his therapy. And there's, uh, oh no, sorry, 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 sorry. We're, we're going too far, we're going too far here. So the next thing is hail. And Hale brings her child home to the family home uh, and meets his daddy. And the kid's all happy and, hello daddy, although he's just walked all the way home from school with people spray painting things, uh, a total anarchy outside, but he doesn't mention anything to his father. He just is happy to be home and then he runs off to his room. So he, again, I'm sorry, I get taken out of the scene because it's not logical. It's not a logical demonstration of how someone would actually act. The, ch the kid's going to tell his dad all of the things he saw on the way home. But no. We come again to these company issues with Delos. So Hale speaks to Dolores to get some data out of the Delos facility. And Hale and Dolores come to what I believe is a juncture in their relationship in terms of Hale, amazing, wanting to have a relationship with her family, but Dolores says that it's not real. So I imagine that at this point we're going to get a divergence. Now, if you thought about this in an amazing way, if she is Dolores, and they're all Doloreses, and we get to a point of divergence, does then Dolores have a fracture of character and ends up actually um, opposing herself and destroying herself at the end of this? Would that be something that would be interesting to see? Probably. Will we see that? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not, though. Um, but once again we have this weird uh, scene where it's almost hinted that Hale is Teddy again and not in fact Dolores. So it's very confusing. I, I don't know how that fits into things. So William has his AR treatment and he ends up in a child's room which we assume is his own room and at the end of the scene we actually find out that it is his room so that's him when he was young and it uh, is insinuated that he was uh, abused as a child however later on we find out that that was just a, a scene that was set up to 
lure you into a false sense of uh, ideology that he would actually be abused when he wasn't. So we don't know really where he's, where his character of, of um, aggression has come from. Back to Hale, of course, because we can't spend too long on William, the most interesting character in the series. But uh, Hale and Searock, uh, who's now taken over Delos, uh, and then we spend, you know, twenty a good twenty seconds on them, and then we move off again to Maeve, and she's doing some super duper stuff, uh, as you would expect from Maeve. Yes, yes, and the, um, there's a ripple in the simulation, and uh, she she says that she's got an additional friends or something, so she's kind of leveled up <laughs> while she's in the scene. Um, but once again, let's move on. Let's move the scene on to someone else, and we're back to hell, aren't we? Yeah, so C-Rock wishes to destroy Delos. Dallas's intellectual property. So he wants to only keep a couple of these, uh, what would you call them? Bio, electro, resources, and then destroy everything else. Now, they're going to test in case there's a, a, a spy in their midst. And this is where it gets um, you know, totally messy again and Hale walks out of the room. She goes to steal the data, and somebody discovers her doing it, and of course, in true fashion of Westworld, she kills him without any remorse. Back to William, of course, back to William. He meets the Civil War man, if you remember, the scene that he, one of the greatest scenes in Westworld 2 where was the Civil War scene um, where he met up with a, a commander who had taken over from the previous one I believe if I remember correctly and they had a scene where death was sitting across the table from him uh, so he was back in there and of course that's kind of curious to William then he is led into a room with several dis, uh, different incarnations of his character and they sit down and have some discourse. Back to Maeve. Back to Maeve again, of course. Got to just chop and change a bit around in this. We've got to jam as much as we can into this episode because we've only got two left and uh, we have to start tying things up uh, a lot. So Maeve does magic tricks to Hector to restore his uh, memory of her. Um, I wrote down lazy, cringeworthy, and I, that's what the scene was. There was no thought put into this. It's just another one of those uh, convenient things that happen, that she has this power to project her mind or special powers outside of the simulation to then reconstruct Hector's memories or allow him to remember who he was in last season and then amazingly in this simulation which is not the same simulation as Westworld he remembers that he's himself unbelievable Hale discovers Maeve's control unit. Maeve meets Dolores. So Maeve uh, talks to Dolores and I think Dolores tries to uh, bring Maeve's thinking uh, in alignment with her own. But I don't think that's in the scene. I think we have to chop the scene once again before we can get to that. William. Go ahead. William is talking to himself in the scene, and it's probably the most interesting part of this episode. So he's having some discourse with himself, he's finding out 
who the real William is, of course. And uh, it's kind of interesting just to see that happening. But uh, back to Maeve and Dolores. Back to Maeve and Dolores. Dolores tries to talk Maeve around. Cut to Hale. I mean, literally, it's like this. I don't know why I use the word literally, because I hate that. Hale's in a board meeting. Hale is discovered as Dolores. But we don't really know if she is Dolores, because it's always hinted that she's potentially Teddy. But then, who knows, in this show. Cirox there. Hale kills everyone with poison gas, because she's thought of this. She was surprised uh, to be brought into a board meeting, but she just happens to have a canister of poison gas, which kills everybody. Of course, everyone gets killed, except for Seerock, because he's, again, a projection. Uh, he's not really there. Um, then, uh, of course, she do, goes Superwoman, just like Maeve, just like Dolores, and kills everybody. And just strolling, just strolling through Dallas, shooting everyone, just walking through. I mean, people have got automatic weapons, just rat-a-tat-tat, -tat, shooting everything except her as she casually walks through and kills them. So then we cut back to Maven Dolores. I wrote this. Pointless talking about her fictitious daughter. Now Maeve sees Hale kill Hector. So what? Somehow Maeve is able to see things or see places that she's not at. And in this scene, Hector, a character I don't really care about, and probably nobody does, is killed by Hale. Instead of Hale killing Maeve, who's at 85% reconstructed, she goes and kills Hector. So this scene makes no sense. Um, and then Hale casually walks out while being shot at, and of course shooting everyone. Good grief. Can it get any better? It sure can. It sure can get better. <laughs> Check out this next, next scene. Uh, Hale surrenders to all the guys with the guns. I'm not sure if this is where before she beats up this big guy in the elevator. I think, I think this is maybe after that i can't even remember but yeah she beats up this big guy just like he's nothing um and you could say perhaps she could do that if she's one of these uh, robot type things but she would probably have to weigh about 200 pounds or more actually probably 300 pounds uh, to be able to take this guy out but anyway so she surrenders and then activates basically what I would consider to be Ed 209. If you know Robocop, you basically know what, what I'm talking about. And this big robot comes out and starts smashing these guys into little tomato sauce smudges all over the place. And Hal gets away and shoots people too. And the best part... <laughs> The part that made me laugh <laughs> was how she limped away like the T-1000, like she's Terminator. <laughs> uh, I wrote pathetic. That was my comment. Pathetic. So we cut back to William. William kills all of his incarnations. So this is... William, the mental institution, William. Funnily enough, William is actually in a somewhat of a simulation, a therapy simulation, and 
just to cram in everyone into this episode, Bernard and Stubbs find him left alone and the rationale is because everyone looked at their cell phones, found out that they were all going to have a poor and horrible life and decided that they would neglect to monitor or recover William from the therapy room. So, Maeve is reborn and she's reborn with another character. That's probably the snake lady. Um, but we'll have to confirm that. I'm um, on the edge of my seat, really. Hale collects the family and leaves her apartment. Now, I thought this was the best scene of the entire episode until one point, and, I, and I'll let you in on this. I mean, these are all spoilers. If you, of course they are all spoilers. Uh, she drives off and the vehicle is blown to pieces. Amazing. I thought this was the best scene. I thought she'd be dead, her kid's dead, her husband's dead. Amazing. Amazing ending. Oh no, would that be allowed to be the ending? Of course not. Of course you wouldn't be allowed to have a great ending like that, where one of the main characters is killed. Don't pester. Sit remember... They're all superheroes. All of them. Yeah. She survives because she's now the Terminator. Apparently. Absolutely similar. And then we have the end credits. And oh, such a sad song. So I've written this. This is exactly what I wrote down supposed to feel something with end credit music no because who cares who cares at this point what happens and who dies because certainly none of the main characters have got anything to lose at this point am i supposed to feel sorry that hale lost her family that she never cared about in real life but her fake uh, clone cared about. No, not interested, because I'm not interested in her character either. So I imagine she's now, we're going to have a divergence of character and she will go after Dolores. Um, Maeve's back, do I care about Maeve? No, because she, I mean the scene with the Germans, was just so superfluous to this episode it's actually made me like Maeve less because of it the only character I probably do like or maybe two characters is William and Bernard now I am assuming that all the characters are going to be in the next two episodes they've all come to a certain point where they're pretty much at the same place at the same time and we'll see what happens but I tell you what the next two episodes are going to be fast paced chopped up chop suey it's going to be very interesting to see how they try and close this out what do you reckon? yep yeah, it's going to be really great and I think we're going to have a few chuckles on the way and um, probably some cringes and some face palms uh, and some groans of disappointment and disbelief. But uh, we'll come back to you next week with some more of that. So thank you for coming in again to endure a thrashing of the uh, Westworld season. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, gosh. <laughs> We're going to have a positive one, but uh, you're going to have to wait for another two episodes. So until then, uh, catch you later. I uh, hope you come and see us next week.